Hello everybody, welcome back to Reconstructing Nigeria and Nigerians. For us to have a better country, we must reconstruct our people. And not just for Nigeria, but for Africa as a whole. Today I'm going to be talking about the citizens are as guilty as the leaders. Uh, the reason why the elite of our political elite of Nigeria and Africa have been able to buy their way through the populace is because the population themselves don't have the right value system. That is what has given room for them to be bribed and to be bought. It is a common practice in Nigeria for politicians to give out rice, bag of rice, even money, to buy the votes of the people during election because they don't have values. It is in a place where the people themselves don't have values. That is where do we have corrupt politicians. If the people, the populace, have value system, there will be no corrupt politicians. This is largely to, due to the fact that the society does not have a moral compass, nor ethics, nor values to stand against these politicians that are buying their votes. It is therefore a common practice for people in Africa to look forward to even receiving the share of money by politicians because they are saying it as a share in their own national cake. They want to be a part of the national cake, which is corruption. So because the people are corrupt, that's why the leaders are corrupt. They compromise their values and they sell their votes even though they know it is wrong in their heart. So this specific act of corruption from the people is supposed to be enough to, in the eyes of the, uh, this uh, act of corruption from the people is what is giving boldness to the politicians without shame to be giving out rights and buying votes and things like that because the people themselves are corrupt. They are taking that money from them. But in other countries, the fact that a politician even comes to propose money or goods or you know, some products to share, to buy the votes of citizens, is enough to disqualify a candidate in the eyes of the people, if that people are a virtuous people. So there, sh there should be a moral stand against distribution of goods of, and gifts and money to voters in order to buy their votes, if, especially if those people have values. So the fact that that is happening among our people means that our people don't have values, So, which also means that the biggest problem we have is not big the problem of leaders, but it's the problem of citizens. It is the citizens that are corrupt themselves, that have corrupt values, that are entertaining corrupt politicians. Uh, in, but in European countries or in developed countries, such acts are not encouraged mainly due to the fact that the people themselves of those societies have the real, the, the legitimate, the, the wonderful, the good value system and the moral compass that helps them to resist such advances by corrupt politicians. They too have corrupt politicians. Leaders are corrupt everywhere, but the citizens that don't give room for that, that resist that, that have the moral compass, the virtues in them, will not allow that to happen. If anyone tries such a thing in Europe or in any developed country, <laughs> they will be, they, 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 uh, there will be it is not, even the government doesn't need to know about it, even the police doesn't need to know about it, the, the judges doesn't need to know about it. It is the people themselves that will submit such politicians to the judiciary and to the police. Because of their values, they will resist such politicians and they themselves will make sure that such person is banned from politics for life. They will force the judiciary to act against such politicians and cause the law of the land to be enforced. So such politicians will be disqualified because of the reaction of the populace, of the people. Such politicians will be barred from office because of the, the protests that will come from the people. Because they have values that is not permitting them to be bought over. So when the people is not corrupt, the government cannot be corrupt. So recently, for example, in Nigeria, there was, every Nigerian knows this story. There is this gov ex-governor that was that was about to be prosecuted in Nigeria for corruption, and uh, the, his people will not allow him to be prosecuted. The, the people went and blockaded the roads to to his house. They would not allow policemen to arrest him 
Then eventually the man ran away to another country and in, from that country he was arrested and he was transferred to England where he was uh, later prosecuted and he was sent to prison. Do you know that even when he was in prison, he was, being, he was proved guilty by an independent law there are some people still in Nigeria who are defending him, saying that it's a po it's political thing. It is Nigeria, it is Obasanjo or Nigerian government that ordered for him to be arrested. It is politics. It is this and that. Yeah, even after being proved guilty, even after serving his uh, sentence, even while still serving his sentence, his, his people went to England to protest. Because they are thinking that the English court is like Nigerian court, where they could just use political influence and protest to set the man free. So it is that this shows the corrupt value system of our people. It, that is, if our people are corrupt, if the people themselves are corrupt, why should you blame the government? Why should you blame the leaders? The lead in in, in such a, a, uh, if such if any of such people were to be elected, these people that are protesting and saying everything is political. Whenever anybody is, pro, uh, is sentenced to prison, they, everybody will be protesting that it is, uh, it is politics, it is, it is politics. So, uh, but especially if it is their own people. So there is no surprise that those same people, when they will be elected to become governors or chairman of local, governor, uh, local governments, they will also be as corrupt as the person they were defending. Because it is the value system that is corrupt. It is the values of the people that is corrupt. So it's not just about the leaders, it's about the corrupt value system of our people. In Nigeria, the citizens will rather rejoice that their sons are the ones getting the chance to be in politics or to steal the money. Even if you catch somebody, a politician that is stealing, people will say it is our person, it is our son. So he's only taking part of his own national. He's only taking part of his own national cake. And you will tell them that it's our son now. Uh, is he the only one shopping? Why is it that other people are allowed to shop and he's not being allowed to shop? Let him shop, Joe. Other people have taken their own. Uh, so it is now our turn that we will be, they will be saying we shouldn't shop. When you have that kind of mindset, turning every criminal act or political uh, something, vendetta, Vendata, then uh, that is why we have corrupt nation. So it's not just about the politicians, it's about the people. But in any country, uh, this kind of thing is not going to be tolerated. <laughs> in Nigeria, if you are not corrupt and you are not stealing, the, your people will be going to look at you and say, dangerous person. They will say he's been there in the government for two years or three years. He has not gone the road. He has not done this. He has not done this for his people. He will be regarded as a dangerous person. In fact, a leader who does not condone bribery in Nigeria is seen as a wicked, stingy, tight-fisted leader because he's not allowing others to eat and he's not eating himself and he's not allowing others to eat. That goes a long way to tell us how much of the work of reformation that needs to be done in Africa. We need to, the, the work of change in Africa and reformation needs to be about reorientation of our people. We need to change the minds and the values of our people. It is the total comprehensive national reorientation that we need. This is the first change that must take place before our country could change. If a thorough work of value reorientation does not take place in Africa and in Nigeria in particular, uh, there, was, is, there is no amount of change of government, there is no amount of change of leaders that will bring about the kind of transformation that we want for our nations. So the point I'm emphasizing is that why the change uh, should indeed start from the leaders, all right? But if the leaders are not changing, let us, we citizens, begin to take responsibility for our own country individual citizens, social organizations, NGOs, pressure groups. Let's begin to walk among our citizens to demand change for them. Let's begin to you know, carry out the work of national reorientation and that will change the mind and the values of our people. We must start a comprehensive campaign, propaganda, you know, to be able to renew the mind and the values of our people. And we must begin to, you know, teach our people that values is more than money, is more than gain. And we must begin to, you know, sensitize them about rejecting such politicians that are giving them bribe and things like that. 
when this happens, if these citizens, ordinary citizens, and that's why I'm going back to Nigeria, I want to go and lead such a campaign. Because only when this happens, the people will automatically be able to produce the right leaders. Once we have cleansed the, our people, once we have cleansed the pot or the bowl where the blank ink of corruption is in, then our people will be able to produce uh, normal white leaders. We will be able to re uh, uh, produce pure leaders, clean leaders. The values of the populace determines the kind of leaders that they produce. It is the value system of a country that determines the kind of leaders that we have. It is the value system and the values of our populace, the population, the people, that will determine are we are going to have vicious leaders or corrupt leaders. If the value system of the people are corrupt, we are going to have corrupt leaders. If the value system of the citizens are corrupt, we are going to have corrupt uh, politicians. So if the politicians are corrupt, it is because the value system of our people too are corrupt. It is only corrupt country, corrupt society that gives back to corrupt leaders. So the behavior of our leaders, the behavior of the leaders of any nation is only a reflection of the value system of that nation. The, the, the behavior of the politicians and the leaders of the country is the demonstration of the hidden or the... You know, they are the hidden values among the people. So the values of the population determines the kind of leaders that they produce. The behavior of our leaders is the reflection of the value system of our country, of our people. So our, our populace, their values is what gives back to our leaders. We give back to the leaders in accordance to the uh, values of the populace and those leaders are going to reflect those values of the populace. We produce the kind of leaders that reflect who we are. The behavior of our leaders uh, uh, is only the reflection of the behavior of our citizens in general. So if the citizens do not tolerate corruption and corrupt behaviors from their leaders, the leaders cannot be corrupt because the citizens will tear them apart. But when the citizens cor uh, tolerate corruption, then of course the people will be corrupt, the leaders will be corrupt because they know there is to tolerance for corruption. Because if they, but in a country where people have the right value system, where they don't tolerate corruption, even if a corrupt leader comes in, they will tear him down. They will bring him down no matter the amount of military power that he possesses. So, but where the citizens could be bought, then we will see that everything just goes. So that is the situation we are having right now. So we cannot just blame the leaders for the problem in Nigeria and Africa. We have to blame ourselves, the citizens. And that's why each one of us must raise up our voices and begin to do what we can do where we are to change the value system of our people. For the love of God, church and nation.